You have the floor now. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we gather together uh, this morning uh, as a community of faith, uh, as a church, as brothers and sisters. But let me ask you, let me begin with one question. Why are you here on Zoom this morning? It's a rhetorical question. You don't, you don't need to answer it, okay? But I suppose there are many answers to that question than the number of people here. And, and I think that we are here, you know, to fill up our spiritual tanks that sometimes get emptied every week. We are here to, because we have made a commitment to be with the community uh, of the faithful. We are here because we want to thank God for God's blessings. We are here because we're seeking something for our lives. We are here because we want healing for our loved ones. Uh, we want um, direction for our lives. And we are here because God has called us. And that's the thing. You know, God calls and we respond. God calls and we respond. And today we will talk about what it means to, to be called. Because all of us here on this screen and those who are not here with us, called Christians, are called. It's not a question whether we are called, but it is a question of, will we answer the call that God has for us? So welcome, everyone, uh, and I invite you to to um, you know to listen to to the hymn that will come after the prayer, that uh, it's uh, the one that talks about uh, you know, uh, Lord, you have come to the lecture, uh, and the words from this lovely hymn paint a, a picture of you know a hardworking people uh, from this uh, from going about their daily task, and when they are confronted with Jesus. Uh, and it is the same Jesus who called those disciples that calls us today. But our lake shores are different. So listen to that. And I invite you now to <coughs> bow um, our, prayer, our, uh, our heads in, in prayers with me. Let us pray. Gracious God. We give you thanks for this day and for the opportunity to be together as we worship you. Lord, we know that um, there are many voices we carry within and, and how hard it is to silence them. You know us and you know how fragmented our lives are and how powerful uh, the many calls. So we are here to worship you, to praise you, to pray and to acknowledge you as our one God. So we ask that you steal all other voices, dethrone all other gods, and prepare us to worship you with our whole being. And may we hear your voice in and through our worship, and let the glow of your spirit illumine those places where we hide in the shadows, trying to avoid the life-changing confrontations that worship can bring. Take away our do not disturb signs and meet us here in our places of need. And attune our hearts to your whisperings, the whisperings of your wisdom. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. We come to the time in the service now when we can share our joys and our concerns. I ask that uh, you raise your hand as, uh, on the screen or some other way, and we will look for you and make sure that we call on you. What uh, joys and concerns do we have to share today? Scott? Scott's got his hand up. Uh, I'm, okay, you're fine. Good morning. I need prayers for my brother, Gary, his wife, Wilma, and their children. Wilma is on, in hospice with cancer. She went in hospice earlier this week. And now yesterday, my brother was diagnosed with COVID. And all the children were around him. Sorry so to hear about it. now everything's kind of up in the air as what they're going to be doing. Um, I, apparently, none of them can see her anymore. They wanted to bring her home to be in hospice at home, but now they won't release her from the hospital. I just need prayers for Gary, Wilma, and their children. Thank you. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Any other prayers? Uh, raise your hand so I can see it. Um, Janice, go ahead. Good morning. Thank the Lord for being here today. And um, I have my girlfriend at work. She called me and asked me um, about putting her on the prayer list. And that's Blanca. I told her I already had put her on there. So um, she's really having a rough time at work. So keep Blanca Caruso in your prayers. And my grandson, Deontay, called me to let me know that um, he's um, COVID positive, but Deontay is fine. Um, he had his rough days already, so he's pr pretty much through it. He went um, for a jog yesterday. He was fine. So um, I'm just thanking God for bringing him through it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Dan? Yeah, continued prayers for Lamaria. That's a former student of Amy's who lived with us for a few weeks. Uh, she was a foster student and uh, she's still missing. Uh, they've had some leads, but nothing's come up concrete. So just prayers for Lamaria and, and her family. Thanks. Thank you. Any other prayers? Um, Greg Cox Cindy has a hands up. And Jim, Jim, Jim Drax. Go ahead, Jim. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Uh, there. A friend of mine, Matt Shriver's father, died uh, this week uh, due to COVID and just prayers for him and his family. Amen. Uh, Greg Cox and then Marianne. So I had uh, brought up my friend, Daryl who uh, works at Lifetime Fitness. He's recovered from COVID uh, and uh, his dad uh, is back from the hospital from COVID. So uh, some joys for some success and healing there. Amen. Marianne? Uh, yes, uh, our, our son Derek and his wife Marilyn, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, they're uh, planning to get a divorce. And um, I just want prayers that things will go smoothly and they can agree on things. Uh, you know, it's hard mm -hmm. for the whole family and for us, of course, but uh, I hope there'll be no, you know, really bad, hard feelings. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some, but I guess my prayer is that it can go as smoothly as possible. And, and uh, let's see. We continue to pray for our, uh, all the prayers that have been uh, put on our prayer chain, especially this morning, if I may, uh, I can share a prayer for uh, uh, Kate and Jason. Uh, Kate's uh, father had a car accident uh, and luckily uh, there were no uh, casualties, but it was a scary one. He has bruises and and you know, lots of pain and they're trying to control his pain, but uh, we pray for, for his well-being, and that um, little by little he will come back to normal life. And I imagine you know, uh, that uh, it is very scary, as I said to, to some of you, you know, 
we never know where the road may lead us, but um, we hope that in these times, uh, uh, one thing we know is that Christ is with us in all things and at all times. So we pray for those who are uh, waiting for vaccines and for, for those who are waiting for more tests to diagnose you know, their illness. Uh, those who are feeling the brunt of these isolation, isolating times, uh, challenging times. And we also pray for the hope that we have and that, hey, we are one more week and at the end of January, so things are going to get better. The weather is going to get better, hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a lot of hope, but also hope for our country. Where we are now that we can continue to work hard at you know listening to each other and acknowledging that we are brothers and sisters and not strangers or enemies so that's my prayer too any other prayers all right barry um go ahead okay i will lead us in prayer and then we will end with the lord's prayer bow your heads please dear heavenly father we thank you for this day for the fact that we are all here to worship you and look towards you and all that we do. We thank you for the weather, even the snow that's heading our way. We thank you for uh, being in those families that have concerns today, being with them, holding their hands, helping them through those things. And we thank you for those joys as well, that we can celebrate together the joys of whatever this, the joys are. We also ask that uh, you just be with us and help us to feel your presence through all that we do. And we now pray together the prayer that your son taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is from the, from the book of Mark, chapter 41, verses 14 to 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brothers of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in the boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, and in the boat with their hired servants and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, everyone, again. As we have read this passage, I think this is a very familiar uh, passage. Uh, we have heard it uh, many times before. And, um, and just wanted to ask you a question. I mean, can you, can you imagine picking up and leaving everything behind to follow Jesus? Um, would you do it? I mean, let, leave everything behind. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me. And to be honest, if Mark were writing about me, uh, I think he would write, and immediately the questions followed. You know, where are we going? What will we do? How long will we uh, be gone? 
how how do what do i need to take where will stay i mean those are the questions i i would ask <clears throat> and I, i'm sure i know i would have easily given jesus 10 good reasons why i couldn't follow but but the thing is this conversation uh doesn't take place in today's gospel because jesus does not offer a map or an um, itinerary or a destination. It's only an invitation. And, and this is not um, the type of journey you can prepare for because it is not about planning or making a list or uh, even packing supplies. If anything, this journey is about leaving things behind. And most of us, truth be told, would find it very hard to leave work and family and friends and all the rest behind. So the question before us then is not, you know, who is called or have you been called? Rather it is, Will you respond to the call of God on your life? Because the thing is, the, the Bible teaches us that all Christians, all Christians with no exception, are called by God to serve in his kingdom. And Paul wrote uh, in Ephesians 4, 1, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. And see, uh, when Jesus calls, he calls all of us, ordinary people like you and me. And he says, follow me. And he doesn't ask to see our curriculum vitae. Uh, you know, he doesn't call our, our references or ask to see a sample of our work or make us audition or, or even submit a personal statement. He just calls. That's all. He does an invitation, follow me. It's like when God called Moses, you know, it was at a certain time in his life, he was old, but he called him. God called Jeremiah when he was still a lad. Mary, she was a girl when she was called. David, he was an ordinary shepherd boy. Peter, Andrew, James, and John were just ordinary fishermen and you and I are people like that and God calls you and me just ordinary people to serve him in some way and the thing is he calls us at any time when we least expect it and the thing is you know we all follow something or someone and you know that because you, if you are on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and all those things, then you know all about following. You might follow a political party. You might follow the, uh, the Packers or, or the uh, Buffalo Bills or the Chiefs or the, uh, what is the other one? Tampa Bay, yeah. You might follow your instinct you might follow your horoscope. You might follow your heart. The thing is, whatever it is we follow, it influences the way we live our lives for better or for worse. The neat thing about God, uh, Jesus' invitation to follow me, follow me, it's an invitation to a new life. Because when he calls the disciples, the disciples' lives will, will forever be different. They will be different. They will no longer catch just fish. They will fish for people. And when Jesus says, I will make you fish for people, he is describing the transformation of their lives. Not simply a job catching you know, new members or followers. Because uh, he could just easily have said 
to carpenters, you know, follow me and you will build the kingdom of heaven. Or to farmers, follow me and you will grow God's people. Or, or to, do to the doctors, follow me and, and you will heal the brokenness of the world. Or even to teachers, follow me and you will open minds and hearts to the presence of God. See, whatever your life is, however you spend your time, there is in that, uh, there is in that life Jesus called to follow. Follow me. And follow me is the call to participate with God in God's own saving work. You know, it's the work of change and grow. And that work is always about moving to a larger vision, orienting our life in a new direction and experiencing that our little, little story of life is connected to and a part of a much larger story of life. God's life. And, and as I said before, God doesn't ask for requirements, you know, because God's call is not fitted to our success, but to God's purpose and will. Did you hear that? God's call is not fitted to our success, but to God's purpose and will. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. And then Romans 8.28 says, And we know that, all, that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to, to his purpose. I believe God has very good reasons for calling, calling us to follow, you know. Follow me is an invitation to leave behind our nets, our boats, and even our parents. And, and that's the hard part for most of us. Because, uh, truth be told, we are very good at accumulating and, and clinging, but not so good at letting go. And more often than not, our spiritual growth involves, involves some kind of letting go. You know, uh, we never get anywhere, anywhere new as long as we are unwilling to leave where we are. We accept Jesus' invitation to follow, not by packing up, but by letting go. So let me ask you this. What are the, what are the nets that entangle us? What are the little boats that contain our life? Who, who are the parents from whom we seek identity, value, or approval? You know, what do we need to let go of and leave behind so that we might truly follow Jesus? I mean, and please don't think this is simply about changing careers or disowning our family or, or moving to a new city, to a new town. No, no, no. This is, this is about uh, the reorientation of our lives so that we cannot travel so that we can now travel in a new direction so that we may be open to receive the life of God anew, afresh. Because when we let go, you know, everything is transformed, including our nets, our boats, and fathers or parents. And that's why Jesus could tell them they would still be fishermen. But now, they would fish for people. They wouldn't become something they were, they were not already, but they would be changed. The disciples would become transformed fishermen. And they would be more authentically uh, uh, who they are already were. See, ultimately, uh, it's about letting go of our own little life so that we can receive God's life. 
And this letting go happens in the con context of, uh, of our everyday activities, you know, work, uh, school, families, paying the bills, running errands, fixing dinner, relationships, and trying to do the right thing. And I think that the call to follow is experience every day. You know, I think some of us follow by becoming a teacher. Others follow by volunteering at the senior center. Some follow by looking out for those in our schools who always seem to be, you know, always seem on the outside and invite them in. Perhaps we, we follow by being generous with our wealth and with our time. Perhaps, perhaps we follow by listening to those around us and responding with encouragement and care. Perhaps we follow by caring for, for an aging parent or a special needs child or someone, who, someone else who needs our care. I mean, we, we can follow Jesus in all these circumstances, different situations. Precisely by trying to imitate Jesus, by trying that is to treat others with the same regard and love and patience that Jesus did, including all manner of people, but especially those who were overlooked by society. This, I think, is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian, you know, to try to live and treat others as Jesus did, embracing the values of inclusiveness, love and forgiveness and healing that, that he radiated in word and deed. First Peter 2.21 says, To these you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. See, real Christianity is the process of being called and remaining faithful. And let's not forget, you and I represent God and Christ. We are his children. We are a Christian. And by the way, let's not be ashamed of being a Christian. Let's not be ashamed of Christ whom we follow. In fact, if we are ashamed of him before people, Christ will be ashamed of us in front of the angels. Just read Mark 8, 38. Folks, when Jesus shows up, and calls our world changes it happened for for simon peter andrew james and john in and it can happen for you and for me you know what what are you called to leave behind as you follow jesus this week what might be you called to move toward in your following the question is not, are you called? But will you obey the call? Amen.
I invite you now to <clears throat> bow our heads in, in prayer. Lord, you called and we respond. It is the nature of Christian life. And help us to follow you during this week. Help us to be ready for whatever this day and this week will bring. But also we ask that you give us strength to stand tall in the face of the challenges and conflict. May we seek, may we seek to know the highest truth and, and dismiss the gravitational pull of our lower selves. May we know when to speak and when to listen, when to ponder and when to share. And in moments of challenge and decision, may we attune our hearts to the whispering of your wisdom. And when life grows difficult, surprise us, O oh Lord, with possibilities. And when life is overwhelming, call us to you to Sabbath moments to restore your peace and harmony. May we go now with the blessing that comes from the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week. Uh, good to see you. Bye-bye. We will begin.